Hi, so first I should uh, acknowledge my deficiencies. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm a old, bald, white male, and I've taken on the task of trying to engage my very diverse student cohorts with this face and this demeanor. Uh, and it's a bit of a bit of a problem. So uh, I thought, why not throw the, the ball back in their court and then educate me rather than me educate them? And this uh, intervention is something that I've tried to do. So uh, I've got the, the cultural flags there, Nick Friesland. I arrived late to the conference. It's my hometown. I got lost. Uh, John Peter, Harry Chan, Harry Chan, John Peter, it's that way around. He's from Sri Lanka and Kingston University in London. So uh, Harry Chan was a project student of mine and he did some of the work I'll show here. Uh, hopefully this will. Yes. Thank you. So uh, the NUS has pointed out the fact that we have Eurocentric curricula, which may exclude some of our diverse audiences. Uh, in my particular context, I teach pharmacology, physiology to pharmacy students and pharmaceutical science students. There may be one or two white faces in my audience. So my students come from very, very diverse backgrounds, uh, African, um, increasingly from Arabia and places like that. And there's very different cohorts within those students in front of me. So a British Indian is very different from somebody who's come from India. So you have to be very receptive to the differences in the audience, not just by looking at the people, by talking to them and engaging with them. And that's what I've tried to do, to bring their expertise into the classroom rather than mine and me making these cultural assumptions. You look the same, so I'm going to give you the same kind of material in the same kind of way. The NES has pointed out that there is this problem. And I think, uh, given the tenor of some of the talks today, we're all quite aware of that, about uh, the need to broaden out our curriculum and address the, directly the learning needs of our very diverse students. But how do we do that? So I am male, pale and stale. And I saw how am I going to relate to my young people who are fantastically diverse without stepping on toes, right? And making an ass of myself. I'm, I'm quite happy to make an ass of myself, as, as people know. But this is a politically nuanced and contested environment. The government wants us to go away from the diverse curriculum. Apparently, in the last iteration of the government, they weren't going to give money to universities anymore for widening participation or diversifying the curriculum or any of that woke nonsense. But I can't do that with my students. They need this kind of input. And there's no way I'm not going to try and deliver to their needs. But it is a very fraught process. I'm going into that classroom with a very diverse audience. How do I engage them without upsetting them, without offending people? And I guess many academics have that same kind of mindset. How are we going to do this in a culturally sensitive, politically sensitive way? And I've tried to develop something along those lines. So it is a politically broad environment, but and I've probably done it wrong. So I've diversified, I think, the curriculum. I haven't decolonized it. The students there say, oh, you should decolonize it. So I am still at base number one and haven't got to the second base yet, but I'm trying. So I think my intervention is about diversifying rather than decolonizing the curriculum. And I've done that by using the students' own voices. And once you start talking to students, there's no end to the fascinating data and information you can come up with. So I spent lots of my career just engaging with students. I try not to engage with my colleagues or they avoid me like the plague and definitely management. I don't talk to them either. I'm with the students and they'll talk to me happily. And we try and work our way through happily as best we can. So uh, I did a little survey, first of all, to find out what the students' needs were in, in a, a typical classroom. So this is just one year's data from a typical class. So I asked them about uh, how they thought they appeared in the curriculum, what they might need from the curriculum. And you see that 93% of them thought that uh, diversity within the curriculum is important, but that's box standard. I'm surprised 7% said it wasn't important, actually. I expect that number to be 100%. But then they reported that they felt their own particular cultural and ethnic diversity was not valued by the university. Confronted with somebody who looks like me, that is apparent, isn't it? So they identified this need. It doesn't help that the, the way the UK reports its stats says things like um, uh, Asian, including Chinese. No, they're very different people. So if you look at the UK census data, there's only like five or six categories. And when I asked my students to self-report, how they uh, express themselves culturally and ethnically. I get a diverse rainbow with a hundred little segments out of a pie with Mauritian, Algerian, Syrian, Iranian, things which don't appear in the census data. So if we don't know who the students are, we'll never be able to address their needs properly. So find out who they are. 
Iranians, for instance, will kill you if you turn their Arabic. Oh, you're from over there. That's Arabia, isn't it? No, no, we're Iranian. Very, very different people. And it's those kind of elementary errors that somebody like me could make unless you enter into this environment very tentatively and find out from the students what they need. Uh, 60% of the students said they didn't see themselves represented in any way in the curriculum. So it's very Eurocentric curriculum full of white folk, I guess. And 90% of them said then we should do something about it. So I've got the data I need then to do something rather than just sit passively and give my old lectures in the same old way and get the students to do some work. So let's see what they did. So this is something that Harry Chan has done. He's from Sri Lanka. He had the brilliant idea of representing the information in uh, the Sri Lankan flag colors. This is a Sri Lankan scientist. So Harry Chan was a final year project student and I gave him an infographic case based study as a project. So marking that involved some negotiation with the project module leader, of course, and they weren't very happy because they wanted to produce it in an RSC paper format. Royal Society of Chemistry, I'm in an chem old chemistry department. They wear tweed and brogues and have elbow pads and all that kind of thing. Uh, uh, I wanted an infographic case-based study and we, we got through in the end and Harry Chan was producing stuff like this. So finding some data about a scientist representing his own face, his own community, which he could bring to the classroom. So that is quite a task for one student. So he has to have research skills to find the, the scientist in the first place, and then the drawing skills. So Harry Chan drew that, that picture from the photograph. Uh, we got that from a Creative Commons license, so there's no copyright issues. And copyright is something we need to discuss in this kind of milieu. How did I broaden that out? So we need to generate lots of data because my students are very diverse. They come from lots of very different communities. So I get them to represent, represent themselves in the curriculum. I take that bog standard academic skills task of literature searching. So I tell them to find a headline that they found in the metro on the way in, on the bus, on the tube. I say, find that headline, vitamin C cures everything, caffeine will make you live longer, whatever the bog standard news headline is, then find the literature underpinning that headline. Once you've found that original piece of literature in a peer reviewed article with a good impact factor, good citation index or whatever value you wanna to add to the paper, find something similar which represents you as a person. So it could be the same name, could be from the same city, same community, same religion, whatever. Some personal hook, another piece of scientific information which relates to the first one. And in this way, we generate a database of underrepresented scientists who have contributed to the canon of knowledge that we're using in the classroom anyway. So it's not irrelevant stuff. It has to be relevant, otherwise the students won't buy it. So here's other images that Harry Chan has produced. So it is a little bit problematic because the one on the left, that's to you, to you, you. Now that's a drawing of a drawing I found that Harry Chan has done in his infographic case space study uh, by somebody called Bijou Karma. Now I've been in touch with Bijou Karma because probably that's copyrighted. Although I'm not sure. A drawing of a drawing, is that copyrighted? So I've been in touch with Bijou, but she hasn't got back to me yet. So uh, I'm only going to show it in this environment and please, Pretend you've never seen it after this, okay? Uh, the one on the right-hand side, uh, Augustus Ball, uh, Alison Augustus Ball, a, a, a leprosy researcher. Uh, that was in the public domain because it was published in the US before 1927. So again, I'm not sure about the copyright for the UK or Europe. So copyright is an issue, and I caveat these images around the copyright permissions that I have been able to get. Uh, to you, you, I think, uh, developed uh, an anti-malarial drug. So these are, these are topics very relevant to my students who are pharmaceutical science students and pharmacy students in the main. So how am I gonna broaden it out from this? What I wanna do is develop a, uh, a database full of underrepresented scientists, demonstrating facts in the literature which represent their community, which they're gonna use in the curriculum anyway. So I'm going to enjoin um, fine arts students, master students, because we have big cohorts of fine arts students in, in another faculty, and I will commission them to draw uh, from the data that my first year students have obtained. So my first year students are gonna do that literature search task, generate lots of data, and then I'm gonna shuffle that data over to the master students to do their uh, creative skills and produce physical artifacts representing these upper, underrepresented scientists. So I can't pretend that this is a very novel idea because uh, I, I stole it from this uh, physical artifact. This is um, women in science. 
This was a New York Times bestseller. And the thing that strikes me about this, this woman in science one, is that the, the imagery is very rudimentary. I don't like any of the cartoons, really. It's not good. I think Harry Chan did a much better job already. So I think my students can produce something better than this New York Times bestseller. Uh, who knows? Uh, so it wasn't a novel idea, but it's really engaged the class. And here's some things that the students have said. So uh, from quite far-flung parts of the world, quite obscure parts of the world, I don't know how many St. Lucian students I've ever had, but here's one. And she said, uh, this was an excellent way to discover unknown scientists from underrepresented communities to broaden out the curriculum. So this is a first year student. That's a, a very perceptive and reflective comment to make, I think. And that's exactly the kind of reflection I want to engender in the classroom. These students need to see themselves in the curriculum because then they'd be much more engaged in their studies. This task excites them. So they sat at their computers and they're researching that bulk standard literature searching task we always give our students is very enlivened by the fact that I say, you need to find a personal hook for the next piece of information. Find something which relates to you. The second student guy was born and raised in Eritrea. It's rare to find a scientist from Eritrea in the UK university system. It's also a country where any scientific advances are not appreciated worldwide. As a result of this research, it's critical for the development of my knowledge of the science coming from my own community. My, 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 my own. So that this person is really personally invested in that task. And hopefully, if I do this year on year with enough students in that bog standard academic skills level four module and give all that data to these fine arts students, then I'll create a database. It might be a, a little book. It may be post-it cards, something like this, a physical artifact which we can share uh, across the community. So the British Pharmacological Society gave me some money for this. Hello? <laughs> was that, was that? Uh, British Pharmacological Society gave me money for this, so it will be freely available to everybody once I, I've got it up and running, and hopefully we'll be able to share it across the community. I will finish it there. Any questions? Such a neat idea. Thank you, Nick. Questions for Nick? And I'm desperately scanning Padlet too. <laughs> there, <Sorry>. Emma. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you are asking for to come forward, do they kind of self-select or do you kind of ask people and how do you determine whether that is right? So uh, this is the, the standard academic skills task. So I have a class, 100 students, and it is literature searching, something that we all do with our initial classes. So they do that task of finding a paper relevant to that news headline, and I ask them to uh, assess it for its quality in terms of impact factor, citation index, credibility of the authors, things like that. And then I say extend that search to find similar material, similar conceptual material, from somebody who has a personal link to you, whether it's the same name, same hometown, same cultural background, whatever. So this includes the white students. This includes the underrepresented communities as well. So it doesn't exclude anybody. So I just go in and find another author called Nick Freestone or, you know, Nick, whatever, from Cardiff, a Cardiff author. Whatever the link is, I ask the students to find it. And they're really pursuing the literature. Then they're going through the literature, trying to find uh, the most appropriate literature for them, represent them themselves as individuals. So the, the young lady was St. Lucian, she couldn't find anybody from St. Lucia, so she went to other Caribbean islands to find other Caribbean scientists. 